One of these places that our mainstream media overlooks is the Democratic Republic of the Congo, host to the world's largest UN peacekeeping force, with over 20,000 UN troops from 123 countries deployed. Britain has a brutal history with Congo, supporting the military dictatorship of Mobutu Sese Seko before the Kabila years. But in the past 72 hours, it has appeared to become clear that the DRC may be facing the end of the Kabila dynasty. Joseph Kabila, whose father Laurent was infamously late for Che Guevara's African Renaissance in the 1960s, has said he won't contest elections. In mainstream media, though, headlines are about an outbreak of Ebola. One of the most mineral-rich places on Earth, European colonization has left the DRC an economy defined by conflict minerals, arms deals, and complete destabilization. Daniel McCabe's new film, This is Congo, follows four characters, a whistleblower, a patriotic military commander, a mineral dealer, and a displaced tailor to give a different perspective to DRC, simultaneously one of the most resource-rich and poorest countries in the world. I sat down earlier with filmmaker Daniel McCabe, whose new documentary, This is Congo, gives an immersive look into the cycle of war and political instability, documenting both the history of the conflict and some of the contemporary players. Let's, before going to the history, where is the conflict currently? Well, right now the country's, uh, it, there's dozens, if not, uh, you know, maybe a hundred armed groups uh, independently roving around, especially in the East. Uh, you've got an intensely corrupt government, a president that's uh, clinging to power, canceling elections, uh, Congo right now is in a very tumultuous place. Uh, it's unknown what, what will happen. Uh, the international communities, the international pressure is kind of being applied to, to get democratic elections going, but it's not looking like that's really going to happen. Mm. What did you see as, as the root causes of the conflict? Well, there, there's, there's so many uh, causes, it's tough to pinpoint one. Obviously, corruption is at the top of the list. You know, when, when you have a, the government in Congo is incredibly corrupt. Uh, and the, the government military is balkanized, where you have these uh, individual commanders kind of operating autonomously, uh, kind of in a mafioso way. Uh, so, obviously, that, you know, it's going to be difficult to move forward in that country uh, with that system in place. So. Uh, in terms of trying to come up to a solution, find that solution, corruption's at the top of the list. And most people don't even realize that there is a conflict, first of all, that's been ongoing really for decades. I mean, sure, we're talking even, about even the, more. the world war of, of Africa, as it's yeah. been called at different points, and many stories about millions of people that have died in the process, in the sense from the documentary that there really are no good guys. It's almost there's no good you know good guys amongst the living when it comes to politicians and the, the groups that are looking vying for power there some guys you know there are some soldiers that are there you know really with the best intentions and there's other soldiers that are there raping and looting and pillaging the congo is is seen sort of around the world as like a place with lots of sexual violence against women i think at the height of, of one of the conflicts it was nearly 50 rapes a day at the end of the day it seems that the people basically are just being trampled by power politics at its finest? Sure. Uh, I mean, that, that's exactly what's happening. Uh, but, but on the ground, it's for the people, just as for, for us on the outside, it's extremely confusing. You know, you have these, these devices that are used to control the population, whether it's by their ethnic group or, uh, uh, you know, political alignment or financial interest. Uh, the, the population are very much manipulated by these, these powers that be. Uh, and, and looking at the country as a whole and, and like where these problems are coming from, because it ha it's so embedded in the history of the country and, and how it's kind of risen up, it's really tough to pinpoint what the issues are. I mean, we can look at issues, but to find the solution becomes seemingly impossible mm -hmm. in, in these kinds of environments. Right. I mean, especially because it's hard to find a solution when there's so much economic interest that's, that's uh, staked in these situations where basically you have massive amounts of minerals, whether it be, um, what is it, gold oh, and they've got everything. cobalt. And yeah, coltan, copper, tin, tropical yeah. hardwoods, uh, wildlife resources, you know. I mm -hmm. mean, there's, there's everything there. It's an estimated $24 trillion of untapped resources, so that makes Congo one of the world's richest countries uh, in a mineral sense. 
yeah, I mean, like you say, we've got, there's huge, huge amounts of resources. Could potentially be, you know, one of the richest countries in the world. Sure. Can you tell me sort of how the legacy of colonialism and corruption has held held them back, basically? Well, I mean, if if you if you going back into history, you know, we really have to start uh, with the Berlin Conference. We can even go before them, but that's that's a good place to start. In 1885, in Europe, in Berlin, European powers really carved up Africa according to resources. So, uh, so this is where it jumped off, uh, and since then, uh, you know, it seems in most countries that are that are this blessed with resources, you find these these uh, these type of corrupt forces in there trying to uh, profit off of it. And this president Kabila has been—he was the son of the previous president who had seized power from Mobutu, who had been president for decades. Um, how long has Kabila, the current president, been in power? Uh, about 16 years now. I mean, his, his official mandate uh, has been up maybe two or three years ago. So he's, you know, he shouldn't be there. And it's, it's kind of in turning this democratic country into more of a monarchy. Do you think, like, historically and even sort of now, that the colonial powers, the sort of, who, who came in, they actually benefit from instability in the country? Uh, I mean, sort of shadow wars they can create. Sure, I mean the colonial legacy has has set the stage for this, uh, but but right now you're exactly right. There's this foggy shadow of war over the country, and it certainly benefits those who are profiteering off of it to have conflict. Yeah, there there is a the war is is not without reason. There, they they have a vested interest in keeping it going.